we tend to assume that perceiving reality is simple. We also tend to believe that what we find to be real must also be true. When we observe the world and see a chair standing in front of us, or feel raindrops on our skin, we know that there is indeed a chair, or that it is indeed draining. And if someone does not share this perception of reality, he might either have a sensory disorder or he might just be ignorant. How can someone not recognize a chair? Or how can someone assume that it is not raining, whilst water drops are falling from the sky? We can clearly see the chair and feel the rain, and if someone disagrees with the observations we make, this person should probably consult a doctor, right? We often overlook the fact that our perception is affected by several filters that one may also call paradigms. These filters have a strong influence on what we see, feel, taste, or hear, therefore also play a role in how we react to these sensations, in terms of what aspects of these we actually consider relevant. What makes up a great part of these filters is our own past, our own experiences. Everything that hits our senses is interpreted in the light of these past experiences. Our brain is always one step ahead everything that comes in passes this filter. Anything said to us by someone else is filtered. We might hear something that has not been said, or we might not hear something that has been said. Our own context of interpretation determines what we finally believe to have heard, seen, felt, smelled, or tasted. If something does not fit into our paradigm, it is often filtered through, yet it can sometimes be made a part of it. Let us assume there are six people sitting in a restaurant, everyone has ordered a dish and the atmosphere is relaxed. People are having conversations and enjoying their drinks. Now, the waiter comes back pork. He asks. That's me, says one person of the group. Nobody would be concerned about, or even notice, what has just been said, but why? Even though it has not been explicitly expressed, the question that has been answered was who is the person that has ordered the roasted pork? And if one would ask the person what question he just answered, this would most likely be his reply, to the best of his knowledge. That effect is only possible because he is relying on his paradigm, that is the experiences he has made before. Thus, he is hearing something that has not been said, and he adds this information automatically. Let us imagine the waiter would ask another person the same question but this time to a total stranger. This would probably result in a confusion, because the person asked might not rely on that same paradigm. This example illustrates how we are permanently influenced by these constructed paradigms, filters, or concepts, that based on our experiences and beliefs, and cover all aspects of our daily lives, whether we are scientists, taxi drivers, or policemen. But not only do our experiences shape our perception of reality, we inevitably live in the here and now, Whatever we perceive, we perceive it here and now, and we have no choice about that. Thus, all ideas and associations that come to our minds are ultimately related to the here and now. An experiment may reveal how significantly this influences our perception. First, choose a movie. Then, watch this movie. After that, write down what exactly happened in that movie and imagine you have administered an oath, and thus have to tell the truth. Now wait for one week and do the same procedure again. Wait for another week and do it again. The movie and its story won't have changed, but your notes probably did. Imagine that you have just heard that one of your close relatives suffers from cancer. Suddenly, an article about the latest cancer research will seem to be more prominent in the newspaper than it did the day before. Again, the filter comes into effect. Our paradigm has changed as well as our perception of reality. What does this tell us about the concept of truth? Could it be that there is no truth? Certainly, there is nothing like the truth. Eventually, we are talking about schemes and constructs, and whenever someone talks about the truth, this person inserts his own private experiences. His truth has been created based on events that passed his filter before. Let us look into science. Science is not just science. There are various branches physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, just to mention a few. Hence, science has always been divided, as there are all these different people living different paradigms, using different scientific methods. Let us take a closer look into the field of hydrodynamics. Some scientists say that the equations expressed by Leonard Euler are abstract and cannot be used for any research. Then there are others who use some parts of these equations within their research and manage to obtain significant results. The interesting point is that there are different approaches within a discipline, and each of these approaches leads to some kind of results. If you ask nature, if you ask the world in whatever way you might prefer, it will answer, as nature responds to many different ways of asking. 
It all depends on how we ask, and on how we perceive the answers we get, that is, what we consider to be relevant, or, what passes our filter and thus fits into our paradigm. We should therefore ask ourselves what is it that I do want to see? And what is it that I don't? And could my own filter differ from someone else's? Imagine you and 20 other people have to draw a stray dog on the street. If we would now compare all these drawings, what would this tell us? This would show that there are no identical representations of this stray dog. Instead, there are many representations, and each representation differs from another, since each participant sees the world through their own paradigm, and as a result, no one else imagines that stray dog in the way they do. It remains unclear what the stray dog would look like, and therefore the problem of truth is presented to us again. How could the truth be found, if each one of us carries our own representation of it, shaped and formed by our filters and paradigms? And what would give us the right, to dictate our perception of reality, our understanding of truth to another individual? So, if you are sitting in a restaurant, and the person next to you uses their fingers to eat food instead of a fork and knife, ask yourself, is something wrong with this person, or is it my paradigm suggesting, that something has to be wrong with this person, just because I learned to use a fork and knife? And instead of putting a label on this person, you may gain an interesting insight. When this person tells you that eating with cutlery is like loving via an interpreter, and that Indian people therefore use all their senses when eating. History has proven that social structures tend to crystallize what is true and what is not, and to exclude the ones who do not see the stray dog in the same way that everyone else sees it. Moreover, only the categories true and false seem to exist, and there are all there are and facts that determine what falls in these categories respectively. An alternative does not exist, so one is compelled to deal with facts. While this may be of helpful use in formal logic, it tends to be very dangerous in our daily lives. It results in a bivalence that makes seeing the world in black and white only. It covers what may be worth to be seen and it limits our imagination and keeps our eyes shut for any beautiful surprises. We must always keep reminding ourselves of the filters and evolving paradigms that we see the world through, and our ability to change and adapt these paradigms, if needed or wanted. Paradigms are not in control over our beliefs about truth and reality, but we are.